welcome to Per Wag Adopt, Berkshire Maine Society's award-winning cable television show. My name is John Peralt. I am the executive director, and I'm also the host of today's show. And before I introduce today's guest, just a couple quick thank yous out there. We want to thank WSBS, WUPE, and 95.9, the three radio stations that just did their ninth annual Radiothon for us. And this year, we raised over $7,500. Also last week, we had our annual lasagna dinner down at Chrissy Farm in Great Barrington. And we want to thank Gary, Andrew, and the crew at Chrissy Farm for another great event. Uh, that night brought us in over $1,500. So we thank everybody over at Chrissy Farm and everybody who attended the event and also who listened in on our Radiothon and made pledges to hear the music that they wanted to hear. And just another quick note, we have a bowlathon coming up at the Cove Bowling Lanes, and that's going to be taking place on Saturday, September, not September, April 27th. Um, and for more information, you can give Danielle a call at Paradise, and that phone number is 413-717-4244. Again, it's 717-4244, and da Danielle can sign your team up and let you know all the great information uh, that you need to know in order to participate in this year's first annual Bowlathon. Um, but it's my pleasure today to introduce our, our guest, Chris, Krista Abel. And um, we have an empty chair next to you because we have a special guest coming a little bit later in the show. But welcome, Krista. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, we, today we're here. Not only are you the proprietor of Bark and Cat, uh, uh, a uh, pet supply store that's actually very, very grateful and uh, and helps the, out the Berkshire Maine Society, but also you're here today on a, on a different on a different chair as you're the co-chair of the Humane Race. Yes, this this is the first year that Bark and Cat, um, which is I'm the co-owner, and my uh, part, business partner Don Catalotti um, is the other owner, and we're taking over the uh, Humane Race for the first year. Um, Alex and Brian Cabral have done it, as you know, for 10 years. They created the Humane they created Race, it. and for 10 years where they ran it, and um, were able to hand it off. Oh. And uh, you know what? So many of our events, Krista, um, we have people that create it, and they own it, and they raise a lot of money for the shelter and our, and our shelter's animals. But then it's we have a hard time sometimes having people step up and fill that place yeah. when they'd like to retire or take a year off. Yeah. And uh, so thank you very, very much for well, stepping up to the plate on we this We were one. happy to do it. I mean, I'm, I'm just, a, I'm in awe of all that they've done because there's so much to it. And, you know, clearly they've worked really hard and it's, you know, ha it has to be kind of a full-time job as you prepare for it because there's so many facets of the community that, that come together, yeah. which is, which is really cool. There's Williams College and the Williamstown Merchants and, um, we have a title sponsor, Greylock Animal Hospital, and another title sponsor, Donovan and O'Connor um, Attorneys, and they've been they've been title sponsors for several years, years I now. believe. So it, it's it's neat how everybody comes together, but it it is a lot. It's a big it's a it's a big fundraiser. It's a big event. Yep. Now you have, as you say, it's a lot of work, and it certainly is. You have other people on your committee, correct? Yeah. yeah I have who might a, they be? We yeah, should give so, them a quick, a quick acknowledgement oh, yeah. as well. Yeah, I have an awesome committee. So Don and I are working together, um, and then we have well, Alex and Brian are still helping us, thank God, because as advisors. Yeah, yeah, they're advising us. They're very good, and we have um, uh, two friends of uh, Sherry Rydell and Wendy Desanti have been big um, participants uh, in helping put it all together. All thank right. you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, the humane race, there, is there a distance? What type of race is it? So the humane race is a, a 5K fun run. So it's not like a timed competitive race. It's a fun run. And, um, or I've been a participant uh, a couple years and I've done the one mile walk. Okay, so you can part. either run or walk. Yeah, you can run or walk, okay. yeah. It, where does the course take us? So um, the course is in downtown Williamstown, and then it also goes through part of Williams College campus. Okay. So it's a pretty it's a pretty little town, and it's a it's a it's a nice little sort of zigzaggy meandering um, race and walk. Okay, and obviously the one mile walk is takes a little bit different of a course. Yeah, the runners are on one sort of pathway, and then the the walkers are on the other pathway, and you can uh, uh, when I when I did the walk, I did it with um, a dog, 
and you can you can do it with or without your dog. Same with the race. There was uh, Alex was saying last year that there was a uh, a runner who had a three-legged dog, and I think yep. they they came out at the pretty much towards the top. Pretty I much believe. towards the top of the yeah. If I remember correctly, so. too. Uh, so you can run with your dog. Yeah, you can run with your dog. And we should probably let everybody know out there that if you haven't done this before or you haven't seen Humane Race, and from watching it myself for all these years, there's a lot of dogs. There's, there are a there's lot a couple of dogs. hundred people, and it seems to be like there's a hundred dogs. The dog population yeah. for the Humane Race has grown every year. Yeah. And we've had very well mannered dogs, but that's because we ask people to make sure right. no flexi leashes, six foot leash or shorter. Mm -hmm. um, to make sure that you always have your, your pet under your control and where flexi leashes can lead to fights and people getting injured as well. So, yeah. And uh, we always have people make sure you have the proper, proper equipment. And the other piece is that don't, if your dog's been sitting on the couch all year or all winter long and hasn't oh, yeah. been out or is not used to running yeah. with you, it's not a day to take them out and have them run a race with you. Right. That, uh, they need to build up their stamina and do this. Yeah. So maybe... For those individuals, Krista, the walk would work well for them. Yes, I would do the walk. I have four dogs, um, but I only brought one each time each I time. did the did, did the, you rotate did them? the walk. I rotated yeah. um, two of them, and I brought the two that were less obnoxious, were better behaved, and yeah. good with other dogs. Just because it is, it's kind of chaotic. It is. Chaotic. I mean, it's super fun, and people love it, yeah. and now, with tons it, of dogs. At the finish line, is it still ending around Tunnel City? Yep. So into a nice big parking lot. Yeah. And what could people look forward to? With is are we going to have any music at the end or? Yeah, we have um, we have a DJ. Um, he's at the beginning when people are registering right. and sort of you know get gathering, yep. and then um, he'll also be at the end of the race. There'll be food and uh, you know water and. Uh, the dogs have little swimming pools. Yeah, we fill up a couple swimming pools for so those they might can be cool hot. off in case it's hot. Little doggy bowls so they can drink. Um, there's usually somebody with dog cookies. Right. And then we do the the prizes, um, which are you know like owner dog look alike, best ears. You know th those sort of fun um, prizes. It's fun prizes to yeah. do at the end. The um, starting time. The starting time is at 10. So basically what you do on that Saturday, it's Saturday, May 4th, you, um, from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., there's a registration. And if you've already pre-registered, which we, you know. Encourage. We encourage people to pre-register. Um, you still need to show up to pick up your, your sort of goodie bag. Race your, package. your race package. So that's happening from 8 to 10. Um, the the day of the race the um the fee is five dollars more so okay. just and there's so another folks. huge incentive and the huge incentive i know from years past is that you give out t-shirts to people yeah. that register yeah the first 150 folks that pre-register and uh, the best way to pre-register is to go to the website which is humanerace.org and you can um you can print out a registration form or you can do it online, online. So either way, um, and yeah, so you, if you've pre-registered, you get a great t-shirt. Sure. Cost? Cost is um, $15 um, for someone 13 years old and up and $10 for um, 12 and under. Okay. I, well, I have to mention one thing, and I know you've been there the last couple of years. It was just a couple of years ago we had the main race, and dirt, right before the race started, it rained like a monsoon. Yeah. And it poured really hard. And it was one of the biggest races I remember. And it poured through that whole race. And I want to say that every single person that registered either ran or walked through the rain. Yeah. The race ended. The sun came out. But since then, we've had great weather. Yes. The last two main races, the weather has been absolutely spectacular. Yeah. We've had some really good weather. So um, I think that I think the, the, the hex is broken. Oh, because good. Poor Alex and Brian, uh, for the first so many years, it rained almost every single you made race. But uh, since the big monsoon went down, we've had some great yeah. weather. So I'm sure we'll have great weather again as well. Well, and I think people, well. and I was there the, the time it rained, but we're like, you know, we're doing this for the animals. Yeah. This is a fundraiser for Berkshire yep. Humane oh. Society. We're going to do it rain or shine. We're dedicated. So, yeah, yep. I think, you know, the people that come are really, they're really dedicated. They're going to do it no matter what. Now, there's... 
there's other ways people can raise money as well other than the yeah. registration fees, correct? So, yeah, so basically, um, apart from the registration fees and, and sponsors, which have been great, um, we have uh, people can raise, pl collect pledges, and there's a pledge sheet on the, uh, the website. Um, so there's always been a pledge prize, so anyone who raises and pledges $500, um, gets entered into a raffle for a, a prize, and this year the prize is amazing. It's a great prize. So, um, a lot of folks know who Amanda Jones is. I actually knew who she was when I lived in Boston because I subscribed. Yeah, she's a famous animal photographer. She travels all around the United States um, doing uh, sessions, port pet photo sessions. Um, and she's she's the uh, person that's always on Bark magazine cover she, her her dog photo, um, so she is she donated a free portrait session, um, which is for, worth a lot of money, which is probably close to fifteen hundred yeah. to two thousand dollars. So it's a and even though she's famous for animal photography, mm -hmm. if someone wants to join the main race and either run or walk and gets pledges and fills them out even if they don't have an animal they could have a oh, photo shoot of yeah, their own. Yeah, she said yeah, it, whoever, you know, sort of wins that that pledge prize if if you don't have a dog or a cat, you, you know, she'll do a family portrait session. Right. So in, in years past with that too, I think one year was an iPad we gave out as well, but Yeah, I think that was last year. Every $500 you get another chance thrown in. So, so yeah, you raise five hundred dollars. That puts you in the running, raffle. and then every additional hundred dollars, you get another. All right. I think that's what we. Yep, we, but that's what you come yeah. with. But the more money you raise, the more yeah. chances you can get. The bottom yeah. line is. Yeah, and I think yeah, this will be a heavily coveted pledge prize. So. I think so, I think so as well. And if you want to look at Amanda's work, her website is amandajones.com, and okay. um, she's she's. She's great, and she's in North Adams, and, and yep. we, we know her, and yep. she's been. Now, switching gears a little yep. bit, Bark and Cat, you're one of the owners, you and Don, mm -hmm. and uh, you give out great gifts as part of the goodie bags to us normally every single year yeah. as well. There's normally yeah. things that you give out. You give out some of the prizes as well. Yep. Bark and Cat does. So if we could, you know, this show is also supposed to be, I try to give at least an educational twist, right. beside letting people know what's going on in the community, is running a pet supply store probably one of your biggest products has to be food. food yeah. And, um, you know, if we sit, take a minute here, break, and talk about, you know what, I've just got a dog. I come in to see you. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want you to educate me. What If I want to start feeding my adult dog that I just adopted from the Berkshire Maine Society, what can you tell me as a lay person? What should I be looking for when I'm looking at dog food? Because there are a lot of brands oh out there. Gosh, yeah. And I know from many years ago, you know, it used to be, okay, here's the, your top three or four brands that are not mm -hmm. sold in pets in uh, supermarkets. Right. But, but today, That's in regards crazy. to pet supply stores, the, the, the number of choice you have are, are unlimited almost. It's just... It's there are so many good dog and cat foods out there now. It's unbelievable. I mean, the competition, the the number of brands, the number of formulas within right. brands, um, grain free, limited ingredient. So basically, what I what I tell people just to sort of keep it simple. Um, you want to look at the ingredient list. Don't look at the packaging. Don't look at the marketing. The you know, yeah. don't don't listen to the commercials. Um, <laughs> look at the the little tiny print, the ingredient list on the back of the bag. And we use we want it to have a a named protein. So instead of poultry, we want it to say chicken. Um, and then we want it followed by like a chicken meal. Yep. So the first ingredient, if it just says chicken or beef, it ha it's muscle meat, so it doesn't have as much protein, it has a lot of water, which is why we want to have it a meal, you know, right. second. And then um, if it's if it's has grains, you know, instead of like little fragments or fillers, we want it to say like, you know, brown rice or whole grain barley. Something that you can something that you view as like a real food. If it if right. you don't know what it is, you know, because mm. there there are a lot of fillers. Is is that, would you say the same for dog as well as cat? For cat, I would say we 
we always say that we prefer a cat food that doesn't have grain. So we say grain-free cat food. So most of the cat foods we carry are grain-free. Um, what are some of those brands? Oh, like we have, um, we have Acana, we have yep. Origin, we have Taste of the Wild. Um, Blue Buffalo has a grain-free food called um, Wilderness. Wilderness. Um, Wellness has Core. Um, okay. And then, yeah, we have another Canadian um, company, Pet Curian, that we sell mm -hmm. some of their food to. And too. I also see now more and more advertising for raw diets. Yeah, we, we do have raw food. Um, I mean, there's raw food, we have raw dehydrated food, we have yep. raw freeze-dried food, we have, um, you know, obviously canned food. It's really, and granulated. I was going to say, can, can over dry over raw, is, is it individual choice? I mean, it, I, I kind of like the raw food the best, however. Um, it's the most natural of. It, yeah. I. I my rule of thumb is the least processed, the better. Right. But uh, but having having said that, and having talked to you know so many customers and people, I mean each dog, like each person, is an individual, and some dogs you know do better if they have more grain. Some dogs do better if it's grain free. Some do you know some of them can't tolerate raw. Some of them. Right. Um, even the cats, I mean, as much as we promote grain-free cat food, there are some cats that seem to do better with grain. So we, I try to make it really an individual assessment because I'm not, you know, sort of like this, there's only one way. Right. I, I agree with you. I think that every animal is different and yeah. some can do excel on some products, some yeah. won't excel on other products. I've got one more question, but uh, why I asked you this question, if we could just bring in our special guests this week, they can come on into the studios. Um, we can bring in Diana's bringing our, our friend Lexi, so she, they'll be in momentarily. But my other question for you, Krista, really is, you know, more and more I'm reading more about allergies and allergens oh, and yeah. allergic ingredients dogs are allergic to within the product. What are some of the common things that you see from customers coming into you uh, for allergy reasons, allergies in the dog food? We do have a lot of customers that come to Bark and Cat because they have food sense. the dog or cat has food sensitivities or allergies. So it's typically corn, wheat, or soy are the most common ones. So um, now you would go with your grain free for or, the most part? Or? Well, actually, none of the dog or cat foods that Bark and Cat sells has corn, wheat, or soy. Okay. So we've just eliminated those completely. Yep. Um, and uh, so chicken, if it's an animal protein allergy or sensitivity, it tends to be chicken because chicken's yep. always been in a lot of things, or beef. I actually, one of my four dogs is allergic to beef. Yep. Um, his name's Lowrider and his nickname's Beef. Beef. So I feel bad for him. <laughs> and that was done before he became allergic that to That was it. done before we found yeah. he was allergic to beef, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, yeah. and again, if anybody has any other questions, they can always give you a call. Oh, yeah, cat. absolutely. But, uh, I'll emails. tell you, uh, I, I know the pet industry has still, even during a down economy, has done pretty well, yeah. and it just seems to be growing every day. And the, cho yeah. the more choices you have, the more difficult I think it is for the average consumer just to make a choice. Well, I know. And you're right, though. I think one of the key things you said is avoid the pretty packaging. Yeah. We have our special guest, Diane. Hello You're there. always a special guest, Diane, <laughs> but we have a very special get with, guest with us today, and our guest is... Lexi. She's um, three and a half years old, a lab terrier mix. She's been at the shelter. It will be a year on April 27th. I know. Um, so very cute. Unfortunately, she um, scares some people away. She's, um, she gets overexcited and exuberant. And see, she has a tendency to just get way Hi. too... Yeah. Her first <laughs> greetings Sit. tend to be a little bit much. But she's extremely smart oh, and she loves so to cute. play down. Now, I'm going to brag about the shelter for a minute. It is our television show, so I get to That's do that. Right. We get but to brag. This dog has been with us a year. She still looks fantastic. She does. And one of the big reasons why we get incredible staff that work with these dogs every single day and I know that, the, you know, really the philosophy behind it is every dog or cat, we're talking dogs in this particular case, should become more adoptable every day they're with us, not less adoptable. And um, that this dog isn't doing circles, chasing her tail, right. 
um, is Down. just it shows you how Down. much just time the staff spends with her. I know she does a lot of agility as well. I know she's picky about who she likes and doesn't like, mm -hmm. and uh, she really would do best in a home with being the only child. Active, yeah. And, and active, and um, she's not keen on cats. Nope. So, uh, but if so, I can't believe that in a year's time that someone isn't out there looking for a constant companion, because when it comes to loyalty in this dog, once she bonds with you, she's an incredible, incredible dog. She truly is. She truly is amazing, and, and she is doing so well because of the staff yep. and volunteers. There's yep. no question. Yep. Um, but there's no doubt. She does. We're not going to try and tell everybody that this dog is for everybody because no. she's not. Absolutely And she not. needs to go to someone that has some experience yep. and a commitment to her. Yep, to social, socialize her, continue that, and continue working on her, her manners and, and everything yep. else because she wants to learn. Um, but yeah, she's not for everyone. There's no question. Okay. She's like way better behaved than any four of my, my dogs dog. would be. <laughs> oh my she is. And you know what? She does things she's like she sits girl. before she gets her food. Oh. She sits before doors open. Oh. Um, she can go through the tunnel, um, retrieving and fetching yeah. and bringing it back. She knows all of her basic commands. She works well on. She walks well on the leash now. She does. Um, she loves the volunteers she's that love her. So cute. She likes um, to ride. Yeah. She's great in the van. She's a little nervous today. We got the lights yeah, on is. and everybody yeah. here, and she's I saying can, what's going that. on. But, mm -hmm. um, but she's an incredible, out. incredible dog. And uh, she's got great ears. Oh yep. She's and and I think the big thing with her too is that um, yeah. she she doesn't always show the best up front. So a lot of times, <laughs> yeah, she she wants more treats, Doc. Yeah, she wants more treats. She doesn't she's always show the best at first, so a lot of people doesn't. do walk by, oh, and, and we understand that. But um, So if anybody's out there oh, looking for a, a dog that does require someone with some experience, yes. Lexi might be the oh. dog for them. If not, we have many, many other dogs entering the shelter now. Every day it's springtime. The shelter's filling yeah. up. Oh, I know, okay. Christy, you were in a few weeks ago, and we are very, very yeah. empty. Yeah. We're getting to be very, very full, especially on oh, the canine okay. on the, side. Oh, really? Okay. So uh, we got lots of great dogs. If anybody's interested in Lexi Dye or any of the dogs, what phone number can they call? They can call 447-7878 and ask to talk to anyone in the kennel at extension 26. Um, and they would have to meet her and, and meet her a couple times. and. You know, she's yep. our favorite, and hopefully her right person's out there, and yeah. they'll find each other. Yeah, she's yeah. one of the few, you know, and I think this also dispels a myth that, you know, the dogs are at a shelter for a length of time. If they don't find a home, you know, they don't find a home. Right. They get euthanized and things like that, and that just is, is so untrue. And uh, yeah. die, she wants she some more treats. Some more. She as long as they keep cookie. doing well mentally and physically, yep. you know. Yep. She does very well. She's, she's, doing she's doing still happy and healthy. Yes. <laughs> and um, but I'll tell you what, if Lexi could speak, she'd say, "Enough is enough. I, I, yeah, I need that forever to home to as well." Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so die, Lexi. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> and Krista, girl. thank you for all that great information. Um, but let's give the website out one yep. more time. Humanerace.org. And this event is coming up May 4th. May 4th, 10 to noon. Is the registration? No, 10 to, what's the registration? Well, 10, oh, eight registration to 10. 8 to 10. The race starts at 10. 10 and ends whenever at we noon. finish up. Yep. And, uh, so and everything you need to know is on the website. <laughs> yeah, it's a great it. website, humanerace.org. You can certainly do that as Sit. well. So thank you, Di, Lexi, Krista. And one more announcement is Family Dog School, which is the um, dog obedience classes and behavior classes that we teach at the Berkshire Main site. It's done by Lisa Corbett. Um, there's a seminar coming up, Puppy Picking 101, an essential information of finding a healthy, happy, healthy dog. And that's coming up Monday, April 15th at 6.30 at the shelter. It's $15 for individuals, $20 for families, and you can go to berkshiremain.org to register for that. Again, Puppy Picking 101, berkshiremain.org, register for that. If you're thinking about getting a dog, um, a lot of information is going to be talked about, like the, um, you know, where to get a dog, what questions to ask a breeder, why you should go to a shelter. Any questions you might need, they'll be able to answer that. Again, Puppy Picking 101 coming up Monday night, April 15th at 6.30. Look at our website at berkshiremain.org for that as well, as along with the Bullathon and the Humane Race will all be listed there. So from everybody at the Berkshire Humane Society, I want to thank uh, our crew today. Thanks for watching and tune in again next time for Pro Ag Adopt.